Some Egyptian scholars tried to prove it by getting down in with some pink granite here and wailing away with some stones for a few hours and tore their hands up and walked out of there saying, well, you know, we couldn't make much of a dent in it, but boy, you know those old folks, they sure had a lot of time on their hands and somehow they figured out a way to do it. Wouldn't give an inch after this. Wouldn't give an inch. It's ridiculous. Now, here's the stone they're working on. Next slide. Some of you may have seen this. This is an ancient 1,170-ton 1, obelisk lies unfinished at the Aswan Quarry. A crack rendered the stone unusable. It's pink granite. They were making it into an obelisk like the one you saw in Allen's slides. Okay? It's about 100 feet long. It's about 12 feet wide, 12 feet deep on the side. Imagine the Washington Monument just squared off. And it's pretty much done. But now let's, let's move this from the Stone Age Let's move it through the age of copper because copper wouldn't make a dent in that. And let's move it into the Bronze Age. Bronze will, will, will chip on it. Bronze will take a little bit of it out. Now, let's put our bronze chisels or hatchets or whatever in the hands of some guys and get them down in this crack and put them to work. How do you think they're going to fare in there? Pretty tight fit. Plastic man might have a tough time up in there. But the point is they've got it pretty much done. They're working on the spire here when they break it. You know how it works, you press here, you get this. Well look, does this look like somebody chipping away with a little hand? No. This looks like a belt sander taking pieces out the size of the chair you're sitting on. Huge chunks of pink granite, one of the hardest stones in the world, just being ripped out. And they press too hard with whatever machine they've got here, and you know your physics, you get stress back here, and they popped it, they broke it. And they just said, whoops, we busted that one. And they just unhooked it, and went somewhere else and left it for us to marvel at and wonder how they could have done it. But now let's go ahead and say they didn't bust it and they finished it. These primitive people now who managed somehow to do this. They finished it. It's ready to go. The hole, by the way, is about 15 feet deep. That's the top of it up there. But still, what's the first thing they've got to do? They got, somebody's got to draw straws to get down there with his hatchet and cut it loose from the bottom. Now who's going to do that with 1,100 tons sitting on top of him? We could not get our best diamond tip blades to cut through underneath this thing. The weight would stop the blade. We could not, the, word, the operative word here is impossible. We could not get this out of here. And yet they did it time and time and time again. To lift it out, just if we could somehow cut it loose, we would have to take a dozen of our largest movable cranes to ring that hole just to get it up. You're being lied to, folks. That's the main thing you've got to understand. You're being lied to. It's absolutely impossible for this one stone, this one stone proves that none of the megaliths were made by those people in that era. And this, again, is not the biggest one. They haven't been balled back twice that big. Okay? This will move 175 times. This is what it would take to move that stone you just saw for us today. It would take a couple days to set up and get ready and, you know, actually make the lift and put the stone in place. But 175 tons, you know, can do it. That 170 ton stone could have been done by us today. It could have been moved into place. Okay, now look at this hummer right here. A 1,170 ton obelisk lies unfinished at the Aswan Quarry. A crack ran into the stone and unusable. Now, there are a lot of these around e e Egypt, these, these uh, obelisks like this. This isn't the only one, but this is the broken one. So what they were doing is digging it out, and you can see it's pretty well finished, except for this part right here. They were shaping the point of it, and whatever machine was on here, it was like, you know, just, this is pink, pink granite. It was just taking it out in chunks, whatever, whatever routing machine they had. Certainly not stone tools making this happen. And they pressed too hard, and they cracked it right through here. Just unbuckle the machine, whatever it was. Said, oh, let's just leave it. It's 15 feet in a hole. It's, the person taking the pictures up here, and you see the edge. It's in a hole. Now, the question you have to ask yourself is, how are you going to move a 1,170-ton obelisk? How are you going to move that? You ain't going to move that. Guess what else you're not going to do? You're not going to cut it loose from its base. There is no saw that would go through that that we have no diamond tip saw that would go because the weight would just stop the blade from spinning. 
Now, how did these primitive people do this? What bozo got the job of getting under there with his stone axe and going to look? <laughs> Can you see how absurd it is? It's just it's ridiculous. Here's what it would have taken to get a thousand tons up today. A thousand tons. Imagine the logistics involved to get that stone up. If you could cut it loose, which we couldn't do. Do you see how absurd it is?